The Legend of the Easter Egg by Lori Wahlberg, illustrated by James Bernardin. One April morning, when the air was soft and sweet, a boy and his sister went outside to gather eggs. Easter's coming, the sister said. Let's pretend we're hunting Easter eggs. What are Easter eggs? the boy asked. Don't you remember? the girl said. He thought and he thought, but he couldn't remember. He was going to ask again. But just then, she scared up a hen, squawking from its nest in the grass. Look, she cried, smiling. She held up a rosy brown egg. That night, the boy woke to the sound of his name. Thomas! His mother's face bent over his. Your sister is sick. Papa must take you away. Thomas let his mother slip off his warm nightshirt. He held up his arms as she pulled a sweater over his head and sat down when she tugged on his knickers. When she told him he could not see Lucy, he nodded. When Papa told him where he was taking him, he smiled. But he was not really awake. He did not understand. When he woke again, Thomas did not know where he was. His bedroom was gone. Mama, Papa, and Lucy were gone. But before he could even think about being scared, his eyes grew wide and he sat bolt upright. Had he died? Was this heaven? because all around him was candy. Long branches of licorice and tiny jeweled rock candy, yellow, white, purple, and pink jelly beans, marshmallow chicks, and tiny chocolate eggs. He stood up very slowly. Morning, Thomas, a familiar voice said. It was John Sonneman. Thomas had come to stay with John and his new wife, Mary, at their candy store, just as Papa had said. All that long Wednesday, Thomas helped Mr. Sonneman in his store. He filled jars of candy. He weighed chocolate on the tippy scales and scrubbed the counter till it gleamed. All day, Mr. Sonneman let him eat smidgens of fudge and bits of broken peppermint sticks. When he finished cleaning out the cook stove for Mrs. Sonneman, she looked at him and laughed. Goodness gracious, she said, you have ash on your face. With her thumb, she wiped him clean. He smiled, but inside his heart felt as dusty and gray as the ash. His sister was sick. He couldn't be with her, and there was nothing he could do. On Sunday after church, Thomas went outside to play. At the edge of a small stream, he broke off a young reed, put it between his two thumbs, and blew. Squawk! Oakley, a red-winged blackbird, sang in reply. Two swallows whirled overhead. Cheer, cheer, they cried. Suddenly, Thomas threw the reed at them, then snatched up pebbles and threw them too. A robin cocked his head, peering at him with one eye. Tut, tut, it chided. Silly birds, Thomas muttered as he turned away. More days passed. Thomas learned that Lucy had scarlet fever. A red rash covered her body. Her face burned with fever, and every night at dinner, John Sonneman prayed for her to get well. Sometimes Mary Sonneman felt his forehead. He wished he could be sick too, but his body was white and healthy and his face cool and dry. On Thursday, Mary sent him out to trade for eggs. When he returned, his shoes and socks were caked in mud. Spring, Mary laughed, so beautiful and so messy at the same time. Kneeling, she took off his shoes and socks, then cleaned his feet in a pail of warm water. The water tickled his toes, and for the first time in days, he giggled. Friday dawned bleak and cold. At noon, the stores closed and everyone went to church. Thomas listened to the story of Jesus' death. The minister talked for a long time. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, he said. While the adults shared bread and wine, Thomas slowly ate a white peppermint. Then he ate a pink peppermint. For a while, he forgot Lucy. Snuggled under John Sonneman's arm, he fell asleep. He awoke to bedlam. Lanterns and candles flashed against the dark afternoon. Overhead, something terrible battered at the roof of the church. Thomas gripped John Sonneman's hand as the townspeople crowded at the doorway, peering out. Hail, they said. High above the church bell swung wildly, pelted by icy pebbles. As the afternoon passed and the hail turned to freezing rain, the bell fell silent, frozen. That night, as Mary Sonneman tucked him into bed, Thomas asked, Is Lucy going to die just like Jesus did? Shh, said Mary. She will not die. She is just very sick. 
I want to see her, he cried. I want to be with her. Soon, Mary said. She is almost well. You will see her soon. She put her hand into her pocket and pulled out a small chocolate egg. Here is your first Easter egg, she said. Sunday is Easter. On Easter, you will see your sister again. Thomas remembered hunting for eggs, and he remembered the question that Lucy had never answered. What are Easter eggs? he asked again. She pressed a small egg into his palm and wrapped his fingers around it. Three days after Jesus died, early on Sunday morning, some women came to Jesus' tomb. She said, they were sad. They had come to mourn Jesus' death, but when they arrived, they saw the stone had been rolled away from the tomb. Thomas held up the egg. Did the stone look like this? Mary laughed. Yes, only much bigger and much heavier. Mary continued. Then an angel came and told the woman that Jesus was not there. He was alive, filled with joy and fear. The woman ran to tell the other disciples, and that was the first Easter. But why do we have Easter eggs, Thomas asked. Mary explained. Just as a chick breaks out of an egg, so had Jesus broken free of the tomb of death. Easter eggs remind us that Jesus conquered death and gives us eternal life. So Lucy won't die? Mary shook her head. Someday she will, and you will too. But if you believe in Jesus, you will see each other again in heaven. That is the promise and the joy of Easter. She tucked the blanket under his chin. Remember, she said, believe in Jesus, hope and pray. That's what you can do for your sister, all right? Okay, Thomas agreed. All day Saturday, Thomas stayed inside and colored eggs. Outside, the freezing rain fell, but inside he stood near the glowing cook stove, dipping eggs. As he plunged the cool white eggs into the warm red dye, he thought of Lucy's fever. He remembered the story of the Easter egg, and for the first time in his life, he prayed all by himself. Very early Easter morning before anyone woke up, Thomas filled a basket with colored eggs and slipped out the door. As he walked, the sun came up, and all around him the world began to sparkle. The twigs on the trees and the tiny buds sparkled. The stubbled wheat field and the long, waving reeds sparkled. Even the ice-bent daffodils and crushed violets, the trampled crocuses and the battered hyacinths glittered like jewels in the muddy farmyards. Thomas caught his breath. He had never seen anything so beautiful. He passed the cemetery. The gravestones, too, twinkled in their shining gowns of ice, and the church bell began to ring. When he got home, Thomas bounded up the stairs to Lucy's room. Finally, he would see her. Finally, he would tell her of the story of the Easter egg, of his faith in Jesus, his hope for new life, and the love they shared that would never, ever end. The End